course members are gonna interview Mr. Liam, who's an instructor at AYS. He is teaching the APP program, and he is actually my former instructor. Hello, uh, Mr. Liam. Hi, how are you? Thank you. you here. It's my pleasure. Thank you for interviewing me. And thank you. In the beginning, could you introduce yourself to the AYS students and for the people, and talk about yourself a little bit? Okay. Well, uh, my name is Liam Beck. I've been here at AYS for nearly three years now. Uh, this will be my uh, seventh semester. Uh, I've been teaching reading, academic reading for the six semesters, and before that I was teaching academic writing for. Okay, Mr. Liam, could you tell us what your educational background is? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, I went to university in uh, the north of England, a town called Leeds, and I studied philosophy. So my, my undergraduate degree is in philosophy, and I'm currently studying a master's uh, degree in um, linguistics, applied linguistics. And so I'm just working on my dissertation right now, and inshallah, I will be finished by um, by the end of August. My deadline is September. Mr. Yes. Liam, why did you decide to teach? Um, because I couldn't think of anything else to do. No. <laughs> um, I, I decided to teach because um, I love interacting with people. Um, I, I like the idea of um, being able to help in some small way to, to educate people, to uh, pass on some knowledge and to hopefully um, give people uh, uh, a good chance to succeed in their own in their own lives. Um, so hopefully I hopefully I do that in a small way. Anyway, Mr. Liam, before coming to AUS, where else have you been teaching? Okay, before before I came to AUS, um, I I. Travel. I've moved around quite a lot actually. Um, I I left the UK in 2005. Uh, I taught um, I taught in Barcelona in Spain uh, for two years. Then I moved to Vietnam um, and I taught there for two years. Then Saudi Arabia also for two years. And so this is the longest job I've ever had. Almost three years now. So obviously I like it here. Seems you like here. I do, yeah. Yeah, it's great. How did you find AOS? How did you know that there is a job opportunity here? Um, I can't actually remember remember now. But uh, I found a job yes. online. I found the job online uh, through um, through a website. But I can't remember which website it was. Um, and I so I sent in an application and. I I was I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I wanted to work in Iraq with uh, the stories that you hear in the in the media, but um, I did some research of my own, read about uh, the Kurdish region and Soleimani, and it sounded very pleasant, very safe, um, and so I I got a job interview, had two interviews, and I liked. Sound of the place sounded sounded great, so so I took the job and here I am. Cool, Mr. Liam. I talked with some instructors and they told me that their their decision about visiting here and teaching here was difficult. Was your decision about visiting here difficult? Um, about coming to work here. Yeah, coming to work and live here. Um, actually, it was not. It wasn't as difficult as I think. As I think it is for some people, because um, a lot of uh, a lot of instructors, a lot of professors, probably come um, direct from the United States, yeah. Um, yeah. and so to go from the United States to Iraq, I think is it's further yeah. and it's more of a challenge. Yeah. Um, whereas I was already in the Middle East, I was already in Saudi Arabia, um, and so for me. It wasn't that far, um, and although the cultures are very different, they're not yeah. as they're not as different as, say, the United States and um, and Iraq. So, um, 
it wasn't that hard a decision and um, it sounded like the job was great and the university was um, up and coming with a lot of exciting opportunities so it, it wasn't actually that difficult a decision for me. Brilliant, how do you see their is like what you thought was before coming in here? Um, actually, um, um, in some ways yes and in other ways no. Um, there's, um, especially here in Sulemani, it's, um, it's much greener. Uh, I wasn't expecting mountains, I wasn't expecting hills. Um, the the image, images that a lot of Westerners have of Iraq obviously come from Western media, from um, American news and British news, um, and a lot of that centers around the violence and the issues that uh, especially uh, happen in the South here. Um, so um, for me, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I was very pleased when I arrived here, when I saw uh, how beautiful the city is, and. Uh, the surrounding countryside, Marvelous. yeah, and there's lots of good hiking to do, um, and much more, much more activities, and much more um, uh, comfortable and relaxed uh, than Saudi Arabia was, for example. Yeah. Mr. Liam, how do you see Iraq? Is it like what you thought about before coming here? Um, actually, um, um, in some ways yes, and in other ways no. Um, there's, um, especially here in Sulemani, it's, um, it's much greener. Uh, I wasn't expecting mountains, I wasn't expecting hills. Um, the the image, images that a lot of Westerners have of Iraq obviously come from Western media, from um, American news and British news. Um, and a lot of that centers around the violence and the issues that uh, especially uh, happen in the South here. Um, so um, for me, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I was very pleased when I arrived here, when I saw uh, how beautiful the city is and uh, the surrounding countryside. Yeah, and there's lots of good hiking to do um, and much more, much more activities and much more um, uh, comfortable and relaxed uh, than Saudi Arabia was, for example. Yeah. Let's talk about interacting with students. What, are, what kind of students do you like to work with? I mean, what kind of students do you teach more efficient? Okay, I, uh, I get on with most of my students, I think. Maybe, maybe they would disagree with me, I don't know. <laughs> but um, I, I, I get on well with um, Hard-working students. I get on well with lazy students. Yeah. I get on well with I get on well with any students, and I can teach any students um, as long as, as you probably remember, as long as there's uh, respect in the classroom. Yeah, the respect was very important. Yeah. So that was that was always the thing that I started the semester with. You know, the most important rule is respect, and as long as we all respect each other, then anything else yeah. we can we can do. We can deal with. Okay, Mr. Liam, every instructor has its own procedure to assess it, it, it students. What kind of procedures do you use to assess your students besides giving the exams? Okay, so apart from exams, uh, well, we it's a reading course, so obviously we test reading skills and vocabulary, um, which is uh, crucial to reading skills, um, and we'll do. We've just fin we just done some debates on uh, communism. Um, we're going to do some presentations where the students teach a lesson to the rest of the class on um, basic economic principles. Um, many different forms of assessment, like um, paraphrasing, summarizing, graphic organizers, outlines. Um, Quizzes, there's <laughs> lots of assessment, lots of assessment. Mr. Liam, you know we are still the learners of the our second language. What do you suggest for the students to enhance their language? Well, I think that um, the most important thing 
for developing your language skills and maintaining your language skills. Um, well, two things really: to continue to communicate in English and to communicate with uh, professors, but not just professors, other students. There are enough uh, Arabic speakers and Kurdish speakers here yeah. that if students are interacting with each other well, then they they should be using their English quite a lot. So they need to maintain that, continue to use their English, and obviously um, you don't you don't develop your vocabulary, you don't develop your reading skills without reading. So um, students need to continue to read, continue to read in English, and never forget that they're still English learners. Even if they're doing their majors, they're still English students as well. So yeah, what do you expect from AOS students? What do you expect from AOS? Do, do you think that the students are going to have a bright future? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, AUIS students are well regarded um, in Sulmani, in, in Iraq, um, and I think that um, students who take part in everything that we have to offer here at AUI, or AUIS, um, from the academic side and also uh, outside clubs and so on, uh, I think students who really make the most of their opportunity here will will be very successful in, in their lives um, and uh, I read an interesting fact that students who uh, learn, who can speak English that in, in the Middle East region actually increase their potential salary by about 10 to 15 percent. So even just learning English will get you a better salary. Um, so I think those students that make the most of it will have a very bright future ahead of them. Mr. Liam, you know there, there are some clubs here and some, I know some instructors got involved in some of them. Do you get involved in any, any of them uh, or do you do any activity outside of class? Um, very good question. <laughs> um, I'm currently very busy writing my dissertation uh, for my master's degree. Uh, which, uh, like I said, will hopefully be finished uh, this summer. Um, so I have got involved um, with some sports in the past, but the last the last year I haven't really had much time outside of my job and outside of my studies uh, to to get really involved uh, with any clubs. But uh, hopefully. Once I finish my masters, I'll be back in the fall, and then September, October, uh, then I can uh, then I can start to make the most of sort of my extra free time that I'll have available to me. Inshallah. Thanks, Mr. Leon, for having me here. It's You're welcome. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure too. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alvin. Thank you. Thanks.